Happy Friday, everybody. This will be the last episode of Hollywood Torrent for the wrap, but more on that at the end. What I wanted to do with this final episode is talk about five stories that you should watch over the next few weeks, months, and perhaps even years. One of them is whether the whole Fox-Time Warner merger is going to have any effect on movie studios. You see, Fox continues to pursue Time Warner. Time Warner says it doesn't want to do anything. The response that most people have is this will cause both of those movie studios to be a little more conservative. It's going to be hard for them to take bold gambles when they are either up for sale or might be acquiring someone else. What that seems to do is offer an opportunity to every other studio out there. I've heard from people at Universal that Jeff Shell has said this explicitly to his own staff, that they see an opportunity to try and get some of the top filmmakers to come and work with them, or to make the kinds of movies, make the kinds of bets that other studios are not. The second story is the continuing saga of WME and IMG. You see, WME bought IMG, which is a huge sports company, earlier this year uh, for more than $2 billion. They're going to have to take on a ton of debt to do it, and the combined company will probably go public sometime within the next two years. Now, the question for WME is whether this will go as well as William Morris and Endeavor's merger. As painful as that was at the time, it created an agency that was a true rival to CAA in the talent space, and this combined entity is trying to do the same thing, because CAA has a huge sports division, it has a huge music division, WME has now added a totally different kind of sports company to its enterprise, uh, and in doing so, may transform the agency landscape. At the same time, Ari Emanuel and Patrick Whitesell, the co-CEOs of WME, have no idea how a lot of IMG's business works, or at least they didn't a few months ago. That's what they're learning right now. Number three, will Amazon rival Netflix? You see, Amazon is signaling that it wants to be a real player in entertainment and producing video. On its most recent earnings call, the company said that it would invest $100 million in original video. It just today said that Judy McGrath, the former CEO of MTV, was joining its board, and it has gotten into business with top filmmakers like Steven Soderbergh. However, People have long thought that this, that the construction of Amazon Instant Video was just a ploy to get more people to subscribe to Prime, which would in turn have more people buying things on Amazon. That may still be true, but I think what Amazon has begun to realize is that producing and distributing original video and having a real impact doing so is harder than you ha would have thought. It's something that Xbox just learned. Number four, what are Peter Chernin and AT&T up to? Otter Media, the joint venture that they firmed, was quiet for the first few months of existence. The initial release announcing it had like four paragraphs, didn't say much. Uh, you know, it has this property Crunchyroll, which is a really big deal in the anime world. Then it bought this company Creative Bug, which didn't seem to do much of anything. The first real indicator of what they're trying to do is their ongoing acquisition of Fullscreen, which is a company that Peter Chernin's company had already invested in. Uh, you know, this is one of the largest networks of online video channels in the world, and it also has been constructing its own special video on demand product, special video on demand being the same thing as Netflix, Hulu, things like that. So it appears that Otter Media is a big bet on what the future of television looks like, and we'll know more about that in the coming months. Number five is what exactly will the LA tech scene look like a year or two from now? Though Maker Studios and Full Screen have scored big exits, those weren't really tech companies. Those were entertainment companies that had raised money and sort of masqueraded as tech companies. There are, on the other hand, several tech companies that either have large valuations like Snapchat or have the potential to have large valuations like Zephyr. Everybody says the LA tech scene is real, but just how real, we will find out. That is a sampling of the stories that I will be keeping my eye on as I move to Bloomberg, a job that I start in a couple of weeks. The Wrap will also be writing about these. Please keep reading The Wrap. Thank you to everyone who watched Hollywood Torrent, and I hope uh, I'll have some more videos for you in the future. You can follow me on Twitter at Lucas underscore Shaw.